scratches on the mirror that can be seen by naked eye but cannot be really seen by the interferometer because they are too high frequency. So of course the question goes whether this is influencing uh, image quality or if you wish image depth, uh, electricity and the background. Uh, uh, and so we run from uh, the trade studies. We had to synthesize the surface uh, combine two kinds of measurements, the interferometer measurements and the uh, local measurements. And the conclusion was that uh, it, yes, it has a very small effect. It's about two and a half percent effect in sensitivity. <coughs> if we integrate that much longer, then we can gain back practically the same, uh, same image that uh, of sensitivity that we had before. And to evaluate the, the background effect, we had to do some scattered light analysis. And Christina Martinez, I believe, was talking about the effect of the long tail of the PSS. And exactly that's what we were evaluating for this particular system. Uh, through the scattered light analysis, uh, we, we figured out that there is an increase in background around the point sources, which means that for bright points, uh, around uh, bright point sources, uh, we get some area that we cannot get as the as, uh, general we do. But again, this is a small uh, effect, this point eight percent effect, even smaller than the other one. So we agreed that this is a good deal, and we took it. And that's practically the only major such step that we already have in, in hand. And uh, finally, this is a completely different kind of trade study. Uh, we all know that the telescope has to move fast from one position to another because if we cannot slow it fast enough, then we are using observing efficiency, we are practically losing observing time to slowing. Uh, but if you move the telescope fast enough, then it, it's a ring. And the question is how to handle that. Uh, there are two ways to do that. One is increasing the damping of the structure. The other one is uh, to shape the input command so that it does not have high frequency components and it does not excite the structure. Now the problem was that the vendor came up with the idea that they cannot uh, include uh, the original plan additional uh, damping because then they cannot keep the, uh, the resonant frequencies. So again, uh, the question for us is uh, whether we can go along with the vendor Position. So we run an integrated model that we combine the finite element model with the structure with, with an optical model. We calculated what the image shifter is, and uh, we figured that by uh, properly shifting the command, we practically can meet the image shifter requirements. Actually, we can uh, significantly exceed it. So yes, fine. Uh, we agree to the vendor's position. And. It's pretty much an everyday occurrence that we have to evaluate something that either the vendor or the engineering team is coming back, either because they cannot do things or because it would be too expensive to do things. So these were just examples of how we spent, at least how some of us spent most of our time. So uh, transitioning to the validation and verification, one major question, at least system changing, but I think it has a significant contribution to everything, uh, whether we define the right system, which means when we write the requirements, whether, whether those requirements are the valid requirements for the system. As I mentioned, this happened a long time ago. This history, we have all, we have all requirements, and now everybody is working towards those requirements. The next step is that when we start to get the, the, the subsystems back, we have to check it against these requirements and we will be checking on the subsystem level, we will check it on the system level. Uh, practically for each requirement uh, uh, we have some documentation uh, that clearly shows uh, what we have to do, what the test is, what kind of test we have to do, who will do the test and so on. Uh, we have plenty of documents that needs to be actually updated recently. These are just the, the, the various examples of camera documentation, telescope, and, and, and DM documentation, how the test should be done. And uh, no, we are in the process, it's about an eight months process that we go through all of these verification uh, uh, documents. Uh, we already have a review for the camera 
Europe. We have to have reviews for the telescope and the data management in the fall, and eventually, early next year, we will have an overall review for uh, verification and commissioning. And for some extent, the hardest part is to validate the system, which means now we must be heavy that in mind whether we build the right system, whether we can do the science that it was envisioned originally. And it is hard because, of course, the complete validation requires the whole experiment, which means 10 years. So we have to come up with some solutions how we can do it in a couple of months or in a few months. Uh, we can verify single visit requirements, of course, because we can have single visits and then we can measure them. For survey requirements in the science department of man, uh, we can run uh, limited surveys when actually the stacking big performance uh, can be done for just a few objects or a limited number of objects instead of for the circular that eventually we will do. And it's the same for the area coverage. Uh, we can have much smaller areas and we can just see the uh, measure the efficiency of observing for those small areas and then extrapolate how it will look like. Most importantly, uh, we have to demonstrate that the whole system is capable of autonomous operation, uh, which practically means the scheduler driven operation. And so at the very end of commissioning, we will have mini surveys, uh, which just means that we will let the telescope go <coughs> for months and, and see how it is working and what we can get back. So, for LSSD, the commissioning actually includes two sets of activities, at least this is two sets of activities in Isolingo, it's AIP and commissioning, which means that assembly integration and test and the commissioning part uh, at the very end, which means that uh, uh, we established the operational model, we established the documentation, we validate the whole uh, uh, observatory. We do it in three phases, early integration, full integration, and science verification. In early integration, that will start when, we, when the telescope is done. Uh, it's on the mountain, uh, it's tested, and it's, it is ready for the camera, but we still don't have the camera, that for a few months uh, we will go with a surrogate camera which is much smaller than the common commissioning camera which has only nine sensors but with that camera we can test practically everything around the camera including the interfaces including the limited, limited sets uh, the basic functionalities the guiding and the optical system uh, calibration uh, uh, certainly some other algorithm price for the real node with data that is collected with the LSSD. It's, uh, it will start as planned in December 2019. It will last uh, about June 2020. When we will have the camera, the real camera, ready uh, for operations on the telescope, and then we will want we will swap the two cameras and we will want the real camera, the big camera, on the telescope go through the whole verification, the whole integration, and at the end of this process, you will have the observatory as it's supposed to be. It's not completely tested, but at least uh, it's assembled and, uh, and uh, for some extent verified. And then in 2021, we will transition into the last phase, uh, which is the science verification and validation. That's where we will run uh, various uh, mini-surveys which will, plan, which will lead directly to that operational uh, readiness review, which is the final review for the, uh, for the whole project. And if we pass that, then uh, the, uh, the LSSD will transition into operation. So the commissioning team uh, will be a subset of the team who build the LSSD. Uh, it's certainly true for engineering and for some extent it's true for the scientists too. It will not be all the people who we have right now, uh, but uh, the key people will be maintained for the uh, commission phase. Some of them will 
might be possible using the commissioning camera? I mean, is there a plan yet of the kind of observations you would be looking to do? No detailed plan yet. And actually, the community has a, an option to suggest observations. And uh, again, there, is, there are no guarantees. Uh, we will probably pick the ones that fit also into the verification plan so that the test various areas. <coughs> at least we as a team, we don't have a preference for kind of science we want to get out of. But we, the commission in camera is initially going to be validated telescope control systems and focus loops and things like that. So we shouldn't think about the camera going on a telescope to generate science verification data. It would be great if we get that and we need it for the data process. But you're very much at the bottom of the field of food chain. Yeah. Yes, and the commissioning camera So the commissioning camera is actually not the right tool. There will be some service With the real camera, especially in the last phase of the commission, yes, there will be some science. We don't know yet. And, and the last phase of the commissioning will be, uh, what's the date for that, roughly? Uh, it will start on, uh, it will be practically 2021. If everything was fine, it will be done in August 2021. We have some leeway flow.
Europe because because uh, we are here in order to find ways how to enhance collaboration between European members. And uh, uh, this dark group are the countries who are involved in this action. For some reason, people from Norway, Sweden have not applied officially, uh, and don't encourage them. Uh, but there are, and, and uh, the main funding is applied to these countries, dark blue countries on the list, uh, on the map. Uh, and there are these outside institutions, which includes University of Washington, and uh, Jericho as, as a member. So outside institutions uh, cannot fully, uh, cannot receive refunds and, and be financed in the same way. But uh, people, for example, uh, if, if, if uh, you, tr you have some joint research, uh, if, you're, if you're coming from one of those European countries, you can get some, uh, a small grant to travel to the University of Washington. So what are the shared challenges between these disciplines? Uh, well, things that uh, fit nicely with the LSST. And actually, the LSST was one of the projects mentioned, mentioned in the proposal and we applied for this uh, funding. Uh, thanks to Jacob, we were able to actually uh, write a nice uh, description of, of the importance of LSST for such, for such an networking project. So there is this joint problems in data tsunami that, that we are facing from digital operation and data access. So our observation community and astronomy have the same problem how to handle so much data and this paradigm change where, where we push, uh, push the computing to the data is something that LSSD is actually going to, to uh, implement. Visualization is another problem. Uh, as I understood, uh, the LSSD has not so far been focused, uh, focused on visualization, but, uh, but it participates in, in uh, Google Sky, right? And uh, sooner or later it will uh, uh, deal with this. But uh, in SDSS already, uh, uh, this was an issue, and, and the book that Jacob uh, and colleagues published on, on astrostatistics actually deals with, with uh, statistical methods to improve visualization. Uh, new technologies, high performance technologies from GPUs, big clusters, uh, uh, things like that. How to how to combine how to how to combine this with with. Uh, with uh, data acquisition and uh, with, uh, uh, with this computing push to the data and training of new, gen training of, uh, new generation of scientists is a very important issue because through a typical curricula at universities, uh, most of the time students do not get the training that they need in order to participate in projects like that. So the LSST actually has its own uh, as it's a, a graduate program or something like that uh, to train students. So when it comes to the US students, this is something that LSST is, is caring about. And Europeans could also probably benefit from benefit, benefit from similar kind of initiative uh, uh, in Europe. So uh, to be more concrete, uh, in the upcoming one year, uh, we will have several uh, types of meetings. So first, in 10 days, uh, there is a small working group meeting in Bucharest where we will um, discuss, discuss issues related to some uh, logistic, logistical uh, problems that uh, are described in the activities that we have. And then another one in October. Those are um, uh, operational meetings where people meet in order to, to help facilitate these joint activities. Then there is going to be a two day conference to be organized, co organized with the IS Symposium on Astrophysics. So I presume there will be uh, some of you present at the, at the Astrophysics Conference. Uh, and uh, you have going to have a workshop in Hungary, probably in February. Now, through this first year, two broad initiatives emerged as a, as a sort of a joint interest to work further on that. The first one is proposal for proposals for European training networks. So, uh, so these are each 20 grants for a uh, uh, network of institutions uh, uh, which train students in some specific skills. We have a poster here uh, somewhere. Uh, 
which actually was uh, also the networking was, was facilitated also by this kind of uh, collaboration because some, some, some partners of the, got together after, after meeting uh, at one of the meetings of uh, this curve. So uh, this is one example of how it looks like. Uh, the problem we have right now is that there is a lot of interest for that. And, and probably, probably we will end up with several proposals from remote sensing, uh, water cycle, carbon cycle to uh, meter plasma, uh, meter science, and uh, so on. So the second issue is actually big, big data and after physics of meter plasma, where we have common interest uh, between geophysics of uh, aeronomy, basically, of, of uh, atmosphere and uh, stratosphere and astronomy. And the third one is uh, uh, an idea to create a science book for stratospheric airship flight platform. In Dubrovnik, uh, at the Atlantic Conference, we actually had some talk uh, uh, with, uh, about uh, using such an uh, airship for calibration of the LCST telescope. But it's, uh, uh, such, such an airship is, is not cheap, and, and it, it actually is a technological uh, challenge. So the idea is to have a science book to, 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 to combine various uh, disciplines together to, to create a science case for, for such a stratospheric airship. It would be a rigid structure, not a balloon. So for astronomers, this is very interesting. It can reach 20 kilometers, maybe 25 kilometers altitude. So, uh, and uh, it can be easily uh, uh, maneuvered, uh, it will be stable, and uh, it, you can imagine infrared astronomy, you can uh, imagine some other types of astronomical projects. Training schools, we already have one training school, the DLR uh, German uh, Space Center uh, near Munich. Munich. Uh, we had this uh, already this year, but in April next year, there will be another one in Cambridge. Thanks to Nick Walton, we, we are getting uh, uh, support from British Arctic Survey. The topic is still not uh, finalized. We're still discussing uh, the, the main topic of the training school, but it seems there is a lot of interest in visualization of big data. Uh, so this is still an open, open, uh, open issue. It's going to be about 30 participants. And uh, uh, again, the trainers, we, we can pay for, for the trainers from the US also. And then short-term scientific missions. Those are small grants up to 1,500 euros for exchange of experts between the countries. But this also applies for Europeans traveling to one of those institutions, which are the partners of, of the inspection means also University of Washington. So uh, if there is someone who would like to travel to the University of Washington, probably this can cover their cost. But still, you have a poor student and besides. Uh, but uh, within Europe, it's useful to have this small grand sum sometimes. So the procedure, the call for this uh, STS sense is continuously open until, until we overspend the money. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, website, uh, you, you can find the code there. So, uh, join us. It's, it's more the, now we have more than 200 people in, in the network uh, from computer science, uh, remote sensing, uh, astronomy. And uh, very easy to join us, just, just, just uh, uh, there are links on bigscare.eu where just fill your name and, and you will be add, added to the emails to be updated on what's going on. We are trying not to spam you, so uh, there's not so many emails. But also, if you're interested in, in something, just send me an email. Uh, and e -E -J -A -N, they are at this email below. Or the official info, uh, you know. Uh, no, that's it, thank you.
that would allow uh, payments for students to enter such, such programs. Uh, but it would be really good for, for the European, European part of the LSSD community to put together a joint proposal to get funding for such. So there, there is a specific funding within European uh, funding schemes for schools, like for networking you know, institutions like this. In that case, uh, it would uh, be very useful for the European proposal to have the LSSDC as, as an external partner, US partner. Uh, need to stay if they don't uh, want to. Uh, I mean, 
that might be for some people who, wow, oh, well, I don't know, whatever, not intended is, is actually interesting. <laughs> together 
and put some kind of joint proposals that uh, and get uh, maybe uh, their own data access center or they are some kind of uh, network or some kind of uh, possibilities uh, for uh, funds uh, and <coughs> that is uh, that might be interesting that uh, in, from those kind of funds it might be even possible to fund some of the uh, PIs which are unnecessary of course networking and uh, we just saw uh, heard about one successful network which is close to LSSD but I think uh, we uh, might be able to do uh, to have our own post action which is going to be LSSD that Europe and to do I have it on the, uh, another uh, slide uh, what is in, uh, another important point in the uh, strategy to find a way of supporting uh, proposals or bits of PIs to getting uh, European researchers or whatever is uh, good for the uh, that, and then influencing the industry or etc. that is something what uh, we are kind of forced to do uh, that our proposals are I'm actually not uh, on those who is teaching uh, to open so my uh, uh, right to go to you. So we just heard from uh, Dan about uh, cost and uh, the earth. Let's say LCT in Europe would be one of uh, proposal basically one cost action uh, in the next uh, few years. Uh, let's say probably not a good idea at all, but, but why not? So sometime in 2019 or 2018 to put the proposal, get uh, people uh, together uh, out of this kind of uh, things and uh, at least uh, get uh, some money for the meetings or for some small travel and uh, communication uh, between them. Excuse me, can you say a little bit more what is BSC? Uh, BSC, big sky earth, it is not that nice to see what we get. It is big sky earth, that is the uh, title of the uh, 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 abbreviation of the cost action, what uh, they are just talking. It is not uh, the bad cow disease. <laughs> Actually, we figured out uh, very, uh, very late in the process of applying all oh, BSC. Isn't that, isn't that the
strategic uh, program document and the drafting of uh, work programs or uh, work programs for the uh, calls between 2018 and 2020 are going to be done uh, toward the end of this year. So you should get in touch with uh, your country representatives if you want something in those kind of goals for the next uh, uh, next round of uh, uh, goals in uh, <clears throat> from whatever part you want to uh, apply. So then it is going to be a consultation and basically work programs are going to be published sometime uh, in uh, toward the end of 20. Uh, 70. So, you should get to know your representatives in different uh, bodies and try to get your voice or your ideas what should uh, be in some of those uh, goals. Let's uh, quickly go through the things uh, MSCA. Uh, uh, three things I think uh, are interesting for us. As uh, we heard, uh, uh, there are only the people who are uh, thinking or doing some innovative training networks and they are um, um, basically they are quite a large uh, with a, a quite large budget it's all, uh, over 40, uh, 400 uh, million uh, euros and uh, usually their deadlines are uh, each year in January uh, there is a RISE program and again uh, all those things uh, in uh, those uh, uh, MSA uh, repeating all, almost every year, so basically, if not this year or next year, there, there kind of uh, there is a pattern of uh, repetitiveness. So there is a uh, research and inno innovation staff exchange and a co fund of regional, national, in and international programs. So all those things might be interesting for us. Uh, uh, IPS. There are three different types of them, so European Training Network, it's not only my favorite and the Nick, this is what Nick wrote in a sense, he would aim, okay, let's put it, European Industrial Doctorates and Joint Doctorates. I'm not sure that we have the kind of capacity that uh, for uh, so this kind of group maybe we uh, have in a way to, go, to, uh, to push the, this kind of uh, doctorates uh, because they do require a formal signatures of you university heads or whatever, uh, uh, whatever, but I think European Training Network is relatively easily done for with uh, uh, universities. So, uh, Nick uh, did say this, that uh, we should probably aim to uh, for uh, 2019 call and some kind of project which are starting in 2020. There are already uh, some data uh, available at that time from the Commission and Camera, etc. And, uh, Toward the end of the uh, grant period, or when uh, they are uh, getting uh, around, uh, th those people who are funded as a doctor, uh, doctor of students uh, would uh, get. Uh, uh, so we'll have the data and uh, uh, have uh, the uh, projects which are already uh, dealing with real uh, data for the uh, from IOC. Uh, so, idea maybe to put uh, something like training uh, 15 PhD students across uh, LSTT at uh, Europe Institute. So basically, uh, we can have kind of uh, people who are uh, doing uh, some time in the, whatever, Belgian Observatory, some time in Lyon, some time in Paris, and collecting all of those things and putting them through the system as uh, uh, And it is a kind of uh, similar to the LSST data uh, science uh, fellowship program. Uh, I'm not going to go what they are requiring uh, in a sense what should you get, but the idea is uh, that uh, they can, uh, this, uh, definitely can give them a uh, different set of skills as uh, uh, and not only different but a new set of skills which are going to uh, uh, give them uh, all uh, so basically it is something uh, where we uh, system level and so on and so on. RICE, I mean, uh, what they said, that is uh, something for us to discuss if we uh, actually uh, And as, I, as far as I understood, all the different people uh, uh, do have an interest in those things. RICE, in a way of 
research and innovation stuff will change. Again, uh, if uh, the uh, idea is that uh, you put uh, kind of international and intersectoral collaboration for research, innovation, and stuff will change. So, idea is maybe we can do, uh, maybe we can uh, put something. In between LSSD cooperation and, uh, and a few institutions in Europe, or between uh, the institutions <coughs> in the States, with a uh, focus on, on LSSD, and then uh, fill, uh, fill out all the other uh, other uh, things uh, in the sense of the, of course you always have to uh, fill all the all the requirements of the goal, so you have to be careful about that. Co-founding is basically additional schemas that they have to uh, do with the regional, national, and international programs. So basically, it could be interesting to put that, uh, okay, we do have uh, 10 PIs which need, uh, uh, let's say, 20 students. We might uh, try to uh, do something like uh, those kind of things. Uh, and this is kind of a LSSD program in our own countries, or, uh, and then we are kind of building up. So there are doctoral programs and uh, fellowship programs. Of course, fellowship programs are uh, probably better for this kind of uh, uh, work. Uh, something that I couldn't remember a few uh, seconds ago, leadership in enabling uh, industrial uh, technologies. So they have uh, quite a few, quite a big list. I can show you uh, documents and uh, what uh, we should probably uh, look at is uh, ICT or uh, that uh, that should be probably uh, call. There are 39 calls and there are uh, there is uh, the call section of about five calls which are uh, called big data public private partnerships and uh, there is a groundbreaking horizon drives on big data and those four uh, five programs are. are Cross-sectorial and cross-lingual uh, data integration and implementation, large-scale uh, pilot actions in sector that benefiting from data-driven innovation. So we can probably find a way that uh, I'm not going to read all of them. And if you want, if you want, I can show you the go into details uh, as well. So basically, it is uh, from my <coughs> state, uh, and it is there uh, in that part of uh, late. There are opportunities if uh, someone wants to go that route. Fred, this uh, is an interesting uh, program because uh, usually you should think out of the box, and it is something that usually uh, they would not, and it is basically beyond what is known and accepted widely and widely adopted. It's a word known. So basically, uh, the idea of these programs is that uh, yeah, they're going to be happy if. Uh, one in a uh, hundred uh, really gets uh, to some kind of uh, result, uh, as far as I understood. In, uh, some kind of things um, could be found that uh, if someone has crazy ideas and then, uh, okay, says, oh, I'm going to do uh, this on LCSP data and I'm going then to cross, oh, this one is an easy one to do it uh, across really into uh, medical research or whatever, and uh, usually they're going to say, oh, okay, this one is not a, a new idea, but some kind of those crazy ideas is uh, what you could uh, put through those things. They have a few lines. Uh, early stages of science, technology, research, uh, and uh, their uh, proactive addresses uh, a promising directions of research for future technologies in order to build up your own country with the of knowledge and design driven large scale individual initiatives oriented toward unified goal and special benefits of European competitiveness and for society. society. So basically in that case this may be the last one uh, as it uh, big, uh, puts uh, European competitiveness into the focus it could be uh, LSST driven uh, Uh, they do have HPC or high performance computing parts in those schemes. So it is a co design of uh, HPC systems and applications. 
deadline is very soon, or basically often uh, our testing is very soon. A transition to exascale computing, that's uh, where we probably could find uh, some parts of the um, LSST involvement. And exascale uh, uh, HPC ecosystem development is a uh, similar, uh, it's relatively uh, small. So basically, the idea is, for example, uh, why not putting uh, something well connected to, the, to some uh, uh, data access centers and then try to do some different uh, technology or whatever and put it through this kind of uh, crazy thinking uh, ones. Uh, did I just say? There are some kind of uh, things what they would like to have uh, as uh, part in that uh, extra sale uh, computer that is uh, do. And okay, that was the introduction. Now the, the good stuff. <coughs> Infrastructures and including uh, e infrastructure. And basically that's something what uh, I think we could and should find uh, ourselves. In for the uh, one design study, so let me just move to other window and see uh, which one. So, development and lockdown, sustainability of the new pan European research infrastructure, so those are infra depth goals. And that says that the uh, focus is on developing new uh, world class research infrastructures. And it is a basically design part. They are uh, given uh, for that uh, one to three million uh, uh, euros for just to. Uh, discuss or basically to produce a document which is going to uh, get you uh, on in the line or possibly in the line of uh, ex in the future for some kind of really large kind of uh, infrastructure. So that is one of uh, things what uh, both Nick and I were uh, thinking about and it is uh, that is kind of a uh, the What uh, Nick put, that's basically that. One to three million design study for new infrastructure. Uh, basically, explore the key su suggesting LSST Gaia Gal Galaxy machine idea. Uh, seamless interface to give uh, EU and US uh, access to complete data uh, for our. Uh, and uh, he also suggested that on, the, on that uh, case that uh, maybe we should. Get uh, to develop something uh, like Central and Eastern European, basically, it's a, a PCML, Central and Eastern European uh, research infrastructure around exploitation of LSST. And he said uh, that we should uh, uh, find uh, appropriate uh, uh, H20 metric call, although if we are doing the uh, call A, that is uh, problem does have the uh, important factor that it is uh, going to get uh, better points if it is situated in the less 
developed a kind of garbage. So basically, the, it, uh, it is differently, differently worded. Uh, I'm going just to say uh, from the wording of that. You uh, represent. Uh, that is another 
of things what I wanted to, to point uh, to you that uh, big data is not a buzzword anymore, it is uh, nowadays extreme data. And that does not uh, mean only the volume uh, in, the, in data, but also it can be a high speed data, and that's basically exactly where we uh, do things. So, Valve, uh, which is in uh, 26 million uh, uh, March, uh, that one covers uh, complementary areas of infrastructure closely related to uh, make uh, research data accessible, as, uh, accessible, accessible, intelligible, usable, and interoperable. And uh, again, uh, infrastructure in uh, September, uh, oh, this one is uh, in September. Uh, I was thinking about this uh, trend 2017 yeah, of uh, data and distributed computing infrastructure for open sciences, which looks to, to be the most uh, uh, interesting for the data and the computing part. Okay. So I, I have uh, some uh, basic question about this course. This is, uh, there is a keyword open science. Uh, my problem is that LSST is not completely open science uh, in the sense that there are, it's not public data, there are some data rights. So I would like to know, to know from the uh, expert people here if it can be a problem or not. Or if it is a problem, how we can... Uh, we do not have a shake or uh, sound from the policy makers, but... Uh, I, I think, think that the policy is clear. Uh, yeah, story, story of how I, I imagine this uh, thing. If you're going for something like a uh, big infrastructure, if we get a design study now, and design study usually last a couple of years at least, uh, then you are getting into some kind of preparatory phase, which again lasts again, again two to three years, and then you start building your, uh, your infrastructure as a big S3, whatever uh, you call that. So uh, if we start doing it, or get some proposal 2018, your infrastructure is uh, ready 2000, let's say, 23, 24. In 2025, you get your first uh, publicly released data uh, without ownership. And you are, uh, you are preparing now that in 2025, you have the facility which is going to access to everyone uh, from Europe or even wider whoever, and then you don't have problem with data rights. And uh, every year you are getting new new release of data, which is publicly released, and uh, by 2035 you have uh, the whole LSST uh, 
survey uh, online for European uh, community uh, without issue with the uh, data. Uh, but in, in between, let's say you, uh, your uh, research infrastructure or in EU uh, infrastructure gets online uh, 2022, you are uh, then testing that uh, infrastructure on people who have that data rights. And again, you, you become online uh, 2025. If you've got uh, what, where I am, where I am. Yeah. But, but alerts are immediately open data. Yeah, the, the, I'm, 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 I'm talking about uh, the, the whole, I'm talking about uh, one tenth, so basically 10 petabytes on in 2025 if the schedule is uh, right. So basically you have, uh, you start survey 2022, you have first data release 2023, yeah, at least two data release, but one year, let's say, of data it is released. And proprietary period is two years, and in 2025, you have facility which is going to hold the data, spinning them on the disks or whatever, or wherever we want, not on the table, but basically online, and uh, have uh, everyone access. Think, think for thinking. But the uh, story is that you have to start uh, working on that uh, thinking, uh, this, not this year, but uh, now. It, because it, uh, to get from the uh, preparatory or basically design phase to the uh, really big one, you need, uh, let's say, five, six years, whatever. But, when, uh, yeah, but, this, but uh, that was a big point is correct that this is going to be a hard sell because, to put it very cynically, you're going to ask European money to sell an infrastructure uh, basically paying for uh, American uh, generated uh, data. No, but it is, uh, it is benefit for Euro the European yeah, sites. I'm just, I'm just taking the point of view of all okay. the Okay, well, uh, actually, you can, okay. you can review, Peter. You used to review some of those things. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm an authoritative source. Okay, but but I you know what, the, what, kind, what, what the kind of instructions for, uh, let's say, this kind of uh, thing. Okay, you are, you are building uh, your infrastructure around uh, uh, medical generated data. So, and, and so the first point is that uh, uh, I, think, I think what I would be uh, a problem with is that they're saying the data is public, but it's not really. You have, you have to invest in an infrastructure to actually make use of the data. That's, some, that's something, that's something what the, whoever wants to and deal with the data is going to be. Because yeah. otherwise, but otherwise the European or whatever, apart from uh, people who do have data, uh, data rights and facilitate uh, whatever they pay uh, in different uh, facilities, uh, it is going to be, let's say, either it is going to be public or it is going to be an uh, exclusive buy. Well, perhaps we can say more generally that well, Sorry. data is found. <laughs> Actually, this is, uh, this is a good question. First of all, anyway, I believe in the future, it's about services. People will go at the best services. Data will exist in many places. So this is the satellite imagery. Uh, and we have done that in the past. We have established satellite image services, hosting US data, like Mobile Sapphire and others. So uh, that's a problem if it's not exclusive. So I would suggest that I not only go for LSST, but also have a final mix of other data that has the additional benefit uh, saying, hey, we can put them together and make sense for the scientists. Yeah, I think, I think that, that, that already sounds like a much easier set. So you're, built, you're, you're asking the EU to invest in an infrastructure that, that serves not just... No, I mean, yeah, okay. Uh, actually, what, uh, what uh, Nick was uh, mentioning is some kind of uh, Gaia, whatever. Uh, mm, yeah, that's okay. His idea was... So kind of uh, LSSD Gaia Galaxy machine, or that is Nix. Yeah, but if we avoid really using LSSD name too, too much, and then we go for, for just data in, in, in general. On, on one hand, we saw them offer the data for virtual observatory, right? But on the so other hand, this is not much at all. Why are these people not doing this? Simply 
Peter was uh, about to suggest, or I think that's a really good uh, point if you want to. Uh, yes, yeah, for sure. Um,
very much likes Python. So that's one way that you use Python for talking to the database without ever seeing the query language. You just use your Python processing, and internally, Python can translate that to the database queries. OK, that is something I would like to show you quickly. Um, if I get that over to the other window. No. Yes. Let's see what it looks like here. So, this actually is something that we have done for the GeoVox, showing them the use of GeoService standards, which uh, we are uh, generating, I am the editor of, uh, and the rest of them happens to be underneath. So, you can send queries, you just see one down there, you can edit that yourself, but like I do, you just uh, pick out something and you do some. Some temperature data, and then you get back the image. And here it comes. Oh. Uh, so that is the principle. And what we have done now is we have uh, federations. Because, you know, this is the keyword where I have to smile because actually, Rustamend is a system meantime consisting of individual installations that talk to each other. And let's do that now. There is the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, ECMWF, that happens to hold the uh, planet's largest uh, climate data archive, 87 petabyte. And we ask them for a heavy rainfall risk area. So that is the query. And now we run the query. So that goes to ECMWF. And they find our loops. They can both send that images. We don't have that. But we know that the national computational infrastructure in Australia can error test them, senses up query there, and brings that back, and now we see it. So uh, now that is displayed here on visual below on NASA Workman in this case, and we see the data visualized. But actually you have an interest in the data. This is the data path that we have seen. Of course, in reality it's faster than we showed here. This is why I cannot talk that far. We also can do the same thing uh, conversely, by the way, send a query to NCI, and then they will find out if something is missing. So what can we do? Number one, we have a data asset that we can query. And we can build that into a big data cube. Instead of having a million of different files, we have a few data cubes that have x, y, and time, and many other dimensions. And we can query that locally. Second, we can integrate different data holdings. So if we now would have an LSD, LSSD service in France and one in the UK and uh, one in Serbia and one in Iceland, they can talk to each other and they can have different data holdings. But for the user, it's always one single integrated information space. And that, I believe, would be a generic advantage. Good. Now I have been fascinated as usual about technology. OK, I'm a computer scientist. I want you. Um, what about applying this? We have done it successfully in the Earth sciences, so in looking downward from the planet. What about now looking outward? That would be the innovation, working on optical uh, astronomy data, maybe also integrate. SKA has, has been mentioned radio astronomy, and maybe cosmological simulations so that users can combine them and do their analysis. Just sitting at their Python workbook, playing with the data, and the service in the background to me. That is the vision that I wanted to bring to your door. And that um, might give us a European funded project in collaboration with our US friends. So that's the plot. What do you think about it? Okay. Thanks. You wanted to come and make any questions? I mean, uh, we can sell it to the for funding agencies. <laughs> well, you know, that's what, uh, and that's actually what uh, this uh, session is about, kind of. Over 
few drinks during dinner tonight <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, and put something on the napkin. We don't have too many napkins. Okay, well, maybe not, not quite. How did you start to write the <coughs> A million euro grant or ten million? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, how, how much would be uh, kind of started or basically the seed money that uh, uh, you adapt or basically in, in cooperation with you others adapted for the kind of astronomical data? That translates yeah, probably what, what you want yeah. uh, to translate it from English to English. Yeah, actually, anyway, uh, we uh, could not cover, say, the whole of Europe initially. So it would have a new place in the project because otherwise it's unmanageable. Okay. And uh, that would consist of uh, technologists and scientists, and they together try to set up something that is useful for the community and open for others to join. So over the lifetime, this could grow again, and some could have, but as you called it, there must be some seed that gets the ball rolling. And that could be a European funded project. Yeah. There are nice calls out there, which I would say are really good. Uh, yeah, I just want to ask for the question. In order to, for this to work, the whole database has to be structured in, in the way that your queries can, can very efficiently uh, extract the data, right? So it's, for the other system, it's also not separate database. Database. Uh, database, uh, which is uh, for the database information or basically or are you dealing on the I was I was skipping this one because I found it too technical. Actually, uh, this uh, mining parallel engine can work with a real relational database, put the pixels into the database, that was what we did initially. We can have our own storage, which is faster by a factor of two. And meantime, we can go into any external archive, which will just tell us your conventions, like file names, which might have been coded coordinates and dates and all of that. And then we actually can run the queries right away on those, uh, on those external files. So that's, that's well possible. And therefore, yes, the data centers told us, so you want to import 100 terabyte into the database? Forget it. This space is cheap, but not that cheap. So yes, we can work on existing archives, and we can use uh, NetCDF, for example. So FITS would be something new for us. HDF, we are exploring currently together with HDF from the US. So uh, I believe that is not a blocker that can be dealt with. I wanted to bring up, I wanted to find that which is just the visual analogy to what I saw. So concretely, I guess that would need somebody uh, to, to move it. Um, so a few people that might be a core team, and I would gladly join them, to shape the consortium, find out what we wanted to do, establish a proposal, I think that part of the question was also if you could estimate how much that seed money, initial seed money, would be. Um, as the yes, technology yes. as such uh, is existing, it's just adaptation. It's not really the system. And in the framework of the normal project, I would say what the Commission likes to see is, for example, something like 3 million euro altogether for the consortium. We can do really great things all together. So that, that fits in that uh, they were all styled or designed, designed uh, infra, infra that uh, what they were most one uh, March next year, design, design phase of uh, Exactly. Having less money, say, <coughs> and a couple of partners, uh, that doesn't work out so well. It's too narrow. Um, having big projects like 10 million, um, you have a tenfold decrease in your opportunity, in your chances, and also I find it hard to manage. So I don't want to be manager of a 10 million euro project. That's no fun in my, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. I'm just smiling because he's handling more than something. Or basically, people who hit it. Sorry. I'm deeply impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suitably impressed as you can. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a great fan of transport.
transparent interfaces regardless of where the information is. And this is exactly the sort of thing we need. Okay. 